Welcome back to our class. I'm just presenting. I'm sharing the presentation of second chapter so that we can continue. Okay. <clears throat> we are starting on the Thank third you. point. Sorry. I said welcome back. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, so we are starting on the third point. Recognizing the stirring within. The stirring uh, within us is very, very important. We see that in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, 1 to 4. Uh, we see that how Nehemiah uh, had the stirring in his heart when he heard that, you know, uh, the, uh, the fellow Israelites were in distress and they were in reproach and the wall of Jerusalem was broken. There was a stirring in his heart that uh, even though there were other Israelites who heard the same news, but it didn't affect them much. But then this news affected Nehemiah. It made him, you know, he, he sat down. Uh, the scripture says in verse 4, it says that, you know, he sat down and wept and mourned for many days. So it was not like, you know, it happened in a day and uh, he was consoled and he was fine. No, this stirring kept increasing within him for many days. And uh, he went about fasting and praying before God of heaven. What happened next? Because he seeked God. He seeked God with this stirring. God intervened. God, uh, you know, gave favor to the king's side under whom Nehemiah was serving as a cupbearer. King, uh, though uh, Nehemiah was a uh, uh, was in captive at uh, this place under the king, uh, you know, uh, he, he found favor in the king's sight. He found favor, and uh, you know, not only got the permission to go back to Jerusalem and build the wall, but he also got the providence, all that was needed to build the wall, like people, and uh, you know, the resources to build the wall. In, unlike Nehemiah, many of us here in the class, as we listen this word, even we may have this deep stirring within us. Maybe it is there for many days, weeks, or months. God's direction for our lives comes through an unusual, a persistent stirring which stirs our heart. And always this stirring leads to an action. It is not something emotional, but then the stirring that is from God leads us uh, or uh, it demands us for an action. And when we move into action, we'll see God himself backing up to fulfill that, that call or that purpose in our life. This, the second point is recognize the grace of God given to us. The word grace here in the New Testament is, uh, you know, we can say uh, it's like divine favor, divine character, or divine enablement. Each of us in Ephesians chapter 4, 7, Paul puts it across like this, that each of us have given a grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. According to our call, God has always given us the grace, the grace then back up to fulfill God's call in our life. An example we can see here is Mother Teresa. Though she had the stirring within her to do something for the poorest of the poor at, you know, at the streets of Calcutta. So it just didn't go with that stirring. It demanded an action. So action, uh, she could have done it one day, a day, two, or a week, a month. But then it went on and on. She could do it again and again. And she did it till the end of her life. How did she do it? This is the grace, the grace of God that backed her life. We need that grace. When it is, when the stirring is from God, God gives us the grace to fulfill his call, his plan in our life. So we need to seek God, just like how Nehemiah seeked God. He went about fasting and praying, God, I have the stirring, I need the grace. And whenever God does it, 
God does it exceedingly abundantly, more than and above or beyond what we could think and imagine. Your gift of grace reveals God's potential and His purpose for our life. The way um, you know uh, God leads us, you can see the grace in our life that one will flow through very easily. And they enjoy doing what they're doing because God has graced them with that gift, with that skill in their life. So God's gift of grace need to be nurtured. This gift or this grace need to be nurtured, need to be developed and used to fulfill his purpose. So it's not something automatic, but then we need to nurture it. We need to protect it. We need to develop it to be the better, to be the best, to be excellent in the uh, in the area, in the plan that God has called us. So recognizing the leading of God's Spirit, the next point. Recognizing the leading of God's Spirit. We see that how God leads us. So when He when He calls us, when there's a deep stirring, He gives us the grace to move ahead. And now He's leading us, He's teaching us in the way that we need to go. We see that in Romans 8, 14 to 16, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but to receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. It is the Spirit of the Lord who leads us. It's the Spirit of the Lord who guides us. And he teaches us in our journey. And how does the Holy Spirit speak to us? We say that the Lord is, uh, you know, he whispers with a small voice within us. Yes, there are many ways the Holy Spirit can speak to us. Some of the ways are he bears witness with our spirit. He quickens of the written word and the spoken word. The ideas, the impressions, the pictures. He also speaks to us through dreams and visions and the prophetic word. As I, uh, as, um, you know, I said before, the prophetic word, when we receive, we need to check, we need to test. Is that aligned with the word of God? Very, very important. Then how do we know it is the Holy Spirit who is speaking to us? When the Holy Spirit speaks, he will always glorify Jesus. And this is a good test for us to see that what we are hearing is truly from the Holy Spirit or from our own feeling. How? Through the word of God. The next point here we see is recognize the circumstances. We need to recognize the circumstance, the situation which we are in. We see this in Psalms 37, 23 to 24. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. And that he delights in his ways. Though he fail, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. We see that uh, you know uh, in our life, as uh, as the Lord is leading uh, in a difficult situation or the circumstances, He orchestrates everything. Nothing is beyond His plan or nothing is beyond his capacity where we are not able, able to reach him or he to us. We need to respond to God. We need to hold on, uh, uh, hold on to God in the difficult times and ask God, God, what is that you're teaching me in this situation? How I can overcome this through you, with you, with the help of God? So God positions us, uh, positions people, place and things to help us walk in the way that we should go. The discernment of the circumstance and uh, uh, when we are discerning in that situation, God responds to us and he teaches us uh, what we need to do. What are the promises that we need to hold on? What, how we need to conduct ourselves during that time? And how we need to endure it because endurance brings strength. Not every uh, circumstances that God orders in our life may be very easy and pleasant. There are challenges. 
there are challenges that has uh, uh, that has come in to for us to be an overcomer in many areas like it can be uh, uh, to overcome our laziness or circumstance to teach us how to handle a uh, situation wisely or uh, a financial uh, situation or the money wisely circumstance that can develop patience endurance where we can come out stronger and much better so in every situation we need to seek god the seventh sorry the seventh is recognizing god uh, recognizing godly counsel and wisdom counsel is an advice instruction sharing of knowledge given to us it is very important that any circumstance or any any decision making or anything that you want to decide take step or you know move further it is very Im important yes okay sorry about that when we are uh, when we are uh, deciding or when we have to take a decision or when we need to uh, move further move further in our life in our ministry uh, or any step it is very important for us to uh, take a godly counsel godly advice so how do we uh, take this uh, counsel or advice look for a person who's in the lord because it uh, is advice can be based on the word it can be a godly counsel uh, in the right time right time which can uh, which can uh, enable us to step into a move into what god has called us to move without any delay so godly counsel is counsel given to us by a man or a woman or it can be a pastor or uh, somebody who is in the lord who has a, a deep and strong firm relationship with god and their walk of life has been good so when we analyze such a person you can boldly approach that person for a counsel and and uh, god will speak in and through them and give us that wisdom that is needed during that period of time so it is very important because proverbs 5:25 says he shall die for lack of instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray again in proverbs 10:17 says that he who keeps instruction is in the way of life but he who refuses correction goes astray and proverbs 11:14 says where there is no counsel the people fall but in the multitude of the counselors there is safety and we see that uh, you know god uses people uh, in our life to bring out his plan his purpose to be fulfilled in our life and we need to be humble enough to receive those teaching receive that counsel uh, at the right time with this we will move on to the next point recognizing the times and seasons god as a calendar and he has a timetable god works according to his plan god has is appointed time and season for the things he does so we need to know the time and season uh, in our life in our relationship with god or in our walk with god we see in psalm 31 15 psalm is saying that my times are in his hands my times are in your hands deliver me from the hand of my enemy and from those who persecute me so very clearly the psalmist says here that my times are in your hands you lead me and also in ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 and 11 we see that to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven when we read that portion it's so interesting we get to know what are the season and the time he has made everything beautiful in his time and also he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that god has god does from the beginning to the end for some of us the minute god calls us we want to see the fulfillment of god's call in our life we wanted something like instant because we are living in this world of instant just like the noodles 
immediately, instantly, okay, God has called me tomorrow, I need to be, you know, out preaching his word, or I need a big stage, a big crusade to be arranged that I need to share with everyone what God has done. But is that the way God works? Even before we could step into anything, there is a process called preparation process, which is very, very important. As we studied, preparation is preparation time is not a wasted time. It is a time where you will each of us will be uh, building uh, or building a strong foundation or laying a strong foundation. During this time is when we need to dig down, you know, deeper uh, build. We know how a uh, uh, big buildings are built. Higher the building is, you know, they need to go deep in the foundation. Greater the call, greater the preparation. We need to prepare hard. We need to work hard. Nothing comes out easy in God's, uh, um, you know, in <clears throat> in uh, you know, they say uh, there is no escalator or elevator in God's plan. We need to take ladder step by step, step by step. We need to really work hard. I was just reading Mother Teresa's book. You know, she is looking out for a volunteer and she says, I don't need a volunteer who just comes to serve. I need a volunteer who can labor 200%. You know, she says, I want somebody to labor 200%. And she's not looking at a paid staff. She's looking at a volunteer who's willing to serve, labor night and day, 200%, just serving, saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. It is so very important to have that attitude when we serve in the ministry, to labor. The scripture says that the harvest is huge, but the laborers are few. God is looking out for the laborers who can go much beyond what has been expected from them. Can we walk that extra mile and it's needed? when God is expecting from us. So how can we do that? It is based on the foundation. It is based on your preparation process. Are we preparing ourselves well for that extra walk, to walk that extra mile, to cross that, what has been expected from each of us? Ministry is not a glamour, but we need to work hard. We should not look out for applauses or just be a spectator, but then we need to be a laborer. We need to lay the st strong foundation. We need It needs to be deep, a foundation that will allow us to expand. And in the ministry, remember, everyone will not come to serve us, but then we need to serve God. <laughs> ministry is all about people, so we need to be ready to serve them. We need to serve because the scripture says that Jesus didn't come to be served, but then to serve. We are his children. We are his imitator. So we need to serve people. We need to serve his people. We need to work. We need to labor. So the time and season is very important to know what God is asking each of us to do. And this season when may not be uh, easy. They, we may face the season of tunnel, but endure it. Because as, we say, as I said earlier, uh, through endurance, we have been strengthened. God's will will be fulfilled in that endurance. When we endure, you see the reward at the end of it. At the end of the season, you will receive your reward. Because God said that it will not be the same. When we look up to him with the eyes of faith, he can move mountains. He can change things for you and me. With this, we will move on to the next point, recognizing God's pattern of working. God is in the habit of setting up examples, patterns, models for us to follow. As we believe that God sets a pattern of working in our lives. In First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, we see that 
this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Look at the attitude of Paul as he writes to Timothy that he humbles himself saying that I'm a sinner and Christ has saved me. He has redeemed me. And this is the reason I've obtained mercy that is in me. First is Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. We should walk in the steps, the faith of Abraham, but the other leaders like Paul, like Timothy, who have walked before us and walked worthy of the calling that they have been called. We also see in James 5, verse 10 to 11, My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. As they endured it, we need to endure, endure with God because he, ha he can strengthen us, He can lift us, He can change us. As we keep walking with God, we will uh, usually be able to recognize certain patterns, certain design, His work in our life. God consistently uses certain areas, certain methods, certain kinds of ministries uh, in our life that his call, his plan will be fulfilled in and through us. So we have covered, we have discussed on the nine signposts in our life. How do we recognize God's plan and purpose for our life? We discussed on the nine points. These are also called as, uh, you know, nine guideposts. There may be many, but we have just listed these nine. They are recognizing the general teaching and instruction of God's word. Second is recognize the seed in our life. Third, recognize the stirring within, just like how Nehemiah went through it. Recognize the grace of God given to each of us. This grace empowers us to fulfill God's call. Recognize the leading of God's spirit. He always leads us. And recognize the circumstances. The circumstances and situations have not come to deviate us from God's plan, but to strengthen us in the plan. How? When we have this relationship with God, we can overcome this circumstance, this situation in our life. We need to recognize the seventh point is recognize godly counsel and wisdom. Very important. We need to be humble enough to seek people for godly counsel. And when they give us the uh, when they give us the counsel, the right counsel, we need to be uh, humble enough to follow that, abide by it. May not sometimes it may not be very pleasant, but when we abide, we see God's hand in our life. Eighth point we see recognizing the times and season in our life. Very important to walk through God's call. There is a time for us to sow, there is a time for us to uh, dig deep, uh, to lay a strong foundation as we prepare. And there is a season where we can reap, where we can we can see the building been constructed, lifted high. So always there's a season for us to sow. There's a season for us to reap. So we need to recognize that in our life. And we should not hurry the process. Recognize God's pattern of working in our life. There's always uh, uh, God's way. Uh, uh, you know, there is a design. There's a pattern in our life with which God works. We need to recognize that and keep moving. With this, we will move on to the third chapter, understanding God's preparation process, which is very important. What does God want to accomplish through the preparation process? We see that in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Before we go there, I see I have received a message. Give me a minute, please. 16. Okay, uh, yes, thank you so much. Please uh, <clears throat> note down, it's Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Thank you so much, Collins. Okay, as we read this, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his and let 
everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessel of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Here we see the process is very important. The preparation process is very important because God wants us to be the vessel of honor. God desires for us to be vessel of honor. We may have some negative thoughts like when it said the vessel of honor and vessel of dishonor and we may focus on the vessel of dishonor. No, God desires, God desires for us to be the vessel of honor because the scripture also says when the man went and asked God if you're willing I will be, can you heal me? Can I see you? God says I'm willing. It's God's will for us to be in good health. It's God's will that he, he wants us to be the vessel of honor. So vessel of honor is very important. We need, when we cooperate with God to fulfill his call and purpose in our life, we are serving as a vessel of honor. With much value and esteem and dignity. And God wants us to be sanctified. The the process of preparation includes sanctification, purification, setting apart. And God wants us to uh, wants us to be uh, fit, useful, profitable, suitable for His use, for the Master's use. And God's wa uh, God wants us to become more prepared for every good work. God's preparation process is not like one time but it is continuous in, in different phase of our life. The preparation process is different. He is preparing us and we need to be ready to heal to that preparation process. We must learn to cooperate and work with God through the preparation process so that His call and His will will be fulfilled. Like we see the example of Moses. What happened to Moses? God prepared Moses in the palace to be used in the desert. But during the preparation process, you see what happened. Moses happened to kill the Egyptian and then uh, be away from the palace and run to the desert for 40 years. So there was a delay in that process. But then God does not give up. We, we know the story of Moses, how God, you know, uh, spoke to Moses from the, through the burning bush and he called him back. He called to fulfill the call in Moses' life as a leader to lead the Israelites from the slavery from Egypt and how God used Moses in the desert as a leader to lead people to the promised land. And we also see the next example, the life of David, how God anointed David as a king when he was a teenage boy, very young, maybe he was in his 17 years of age. At this time, God anointed him. Did he become king immediately? It took 13 years for him to become a king. But what was the process? There was a preparation process. A man who was anointed as a king, uh, be uh, just because he faced a giant and killed him, killed him, and he, he, he received the praises of people, the praises in the nation, and he became a, a national hero, and he had to, uh, you know, um, he had to face the jealousy of Saul and run for his life from, you know, a cave to cave. But during this process, what happened? God has called him and God was faithful enough to save David each and every time. He went to the time of struggle. He went to a time of struggle. His own son was, you know, uh, searching to kill him. But then during all this circumstance and situation, he never gave up on God. He held on to God. How, how can he hold on to God like that? The relationship that he built with God, the relationship that he had with God made him strong even during the difficult time.
This is the relationship that is needed to be built within us. Even Moses faced a lot of challenges with the people. They were about to stone him in the desert. But what made him to endure those difficult situations and circumstances is the relationship that he had with God. So what is the relationship that you and I have with God that we can endure in, in the circumstance or the situation that challenges us? Our relationship, the daily, the time that we spend with God is very important. It's not one fixed time that we have to spend with Him, but throughout the day, how you uh, how you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, how you how you converse with the Holy Spirit, how you converse in His presence, how you seek for more of God in your life, how you share everything with God. Every part of your life should be shared with God. We cannot keep God out of certain area. If at all we keep God out of certain area, remember that area, the Satan takes advantage of that area and he can defeat us. It's very important for us to recognize the call of God in our life and abide and abide as per the call and move on. We also see the transformation in Saul's life. The godly character is important, maturity in all areas. The preparation process God takes us through will definitely build, build godly character and uh, you know the maturity in all areas. Give me a minute. I see some chat. OK. God is more interested in our character. They say that the uh, character is very important because character is something that holds our anointing. So we may, be, uh, we may have many gifts. But what is more important than the gift is your character. Character is very important. Our character is the foundation upon which our ministry, our life is built on. Gifts and anointing are given from heaven, but character is built on earth. So developing a godly character is very important in the process. And all our subjects are designed in such a way that you know, our uh, inner person has changed, has been transformed, and we build a strong character to be uh, the uh, uh, to what God wants us to be in the ministry. The second is maturity in all areas. Maturity is our personal work with God, the obedience in all areas. Maturity is our relationship with people, and maturity is also the gift and calling that God has placed in our life and how we handle it. And one thing uh, we need to understand that, uh, you know, uh, our growth and uh, our character, godly character and maturity is progressive. The more we associate with godly people, the more we spend time reading the word of God, you know, it disciplines us, it changes us. The more we uh, come into his presence and see God and pray, and every day when we try uh, strive to lead our life that is pleasing to God, you see a godly character has been developed within us. And each time we step into a new level of obedience, a new level of godliness, a new level of maturity, and we will find a new level of God's anointing in our life. And when we see ourselves, uh, when we compare ourselves from before to now, we see that there's so much of development and there's so much of change and there's so much of discipline that we have um, you know developed within us in the process of time the things we learn today will prepare us for tomorrow god will prepare us to fulfill his purpose his plan in our life so
one second. Was this slide visible? No, ma'am. No. Now? Yes, ma'am. What do you see? Fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Understanding God's preparation process. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the second point is the three points. Can you see the three points in the slide? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So the second point is how does God prepare us? God prepares us uh, through his word, through the Holy Spirit and through other people. Through his word, God quickens us by giving his promise, by giving his word. And the, uh, the second is through the Holy Spirit. When we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, when we receive it, the Holy Spirit comes within us and he abides within us forever. We see that in the book of John, chapter 16. Uh, that, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit transforms us into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord leads us. And uh, and also through other people, you know, uh, when we associate with other people, with the godly people uh, who are doing the kind of things we want to do, that is in the ministry to serve God, we have been influenced, we have been taught by other people through their life and through their guidance and life's experience. There are many lessons uh, in our journey that we can learn from the good times and bad times, but it helps us to build ourselves. Life's experience will teach us the lessons that we cannot learn from anywhere else, but only through this. And uh, we cannot deny uh, what we learn, what the experience that we get through this life's experience is uh, what uh, what we remember for very long and what we can teach and share to others. And the third point here we see is things to keep in mind as we go through God's preparation process. Um, we must learn to cooperate and work with God through the preparation process. It is very important to cooperate with God. Only when we cooperate with God, God's plan, God's will will be fulfilled in our life. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 9, we see that Paul is saying that we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field and you are God's building see that God can fulfill his plan his purpose only through us and he can only fulfill through us is uh, when we cooperate with God so we must cooperate with God to fulfill God's plan and purpose in our life the second year under this point is our attitude matters with what attitude are we approaching God we need to maintain a healthy attitude when we approach God because our God is a God who sees the heart, not at the outward appearance, what man sees, but our heart. Our heart attitude is very important when we come before God. The very purpose of what we are doing, why we are doing is very important. It should be pleasing God. Consistency is where the power is. We need to be consistent. We need to endure. We need to be consistent to see God's power in our life. And as we are faithful uh, uh, in little things, God will promote us to be the next, to do the next. Faithfulness in the ministry is very important because in Matthew 25, 23, he says that, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. And I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So God is saying, when you are faithful enough in small things, I will give you much bigger. I will assign you much bigger. 
we need to be faithful. Be aware of complacency. Allow God to stretch you. Be aware. We need to press on that I may, uh, you know, uh, uh, Paul is saying in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, he's saying, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. We should not allow any laziness to come near us, but then hold on, run till you endure, till you succeed, till you achieve. We need to press on because he has laid hold on us. The preparation time is never a wasted time. The greater the call, the greater the preparation. We need to dig deep, work hard, go step by step. There is no elevator or escalator in the process how God works. We need to go step by step, work hard. We need to labor hard. And you see God's hand in your life. Do not be hasty. Let each preparation season run its full course. The preparation time is very important. We should not be hasty. We should allow the Lord to work in our life. There are different seasons, as we see different seasons in the life of Moses, in the life of David, and in the life of Paul. We need to allow the Lord to take us through because he has allowed certain things to happen in our life because God is preparing us. There's a purpose for every season. We need to allow, we need to ask God, we need to say, God, you prepare us. We need to endure this season. We need to learn what God is teaching in this season. As Proverbs 21, 5 says, the plants of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. We should not be hasty. Hastiness is not from God. He's asking us to prepare. God has allowed this season in our life. We need to endure it. We need to learn what God is teaching in that season, how we can be an overcomer because we are not alone and he is with us. Just like how Moses endured, just like how David went through the difficult time. We see in Psalms 133, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He blesses God during the difficult situation. That's why God says, David, you are a man after my own heart. Can we be like that? Can we see God even in difficult situation? Can we look up to him and say, Lord, we love you. I bless your name. We need to be like Paul. How Paul said, for me to live is Christ and die is gain. And also the life of Paul explains like what intimate relationship that he developed to be with God. And that's why with all boldness, he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. What makes a man of God to say this? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. That means his walk of life was so pleasing to God that he did his best. He gave his best. He gave his everything. He said, for me to live, or for me to die is gain, that I will be with Christ. We need to walk in that realm, how we can walk. It's only by developing ourselves. We need to prepare ourselves to have that relationship with God. Friends, it's not difficult. It's easy when we see God. When we say, God, you abide in me, you prepare me, you lead me, you guide me, here I am. God is looking out people with availability. He is not looking at somebody who is very highly qualified and who is capable, who has a lot of gifts and talents. No, he says, I am looking at the simple. Though there were many learned people when Jesus was there, Jesus chose the simple fisherman to be his disciple. When we are simple, it's much easy to receive God's wisdom, to receive God's teaching, because we won't reason out much with him, because God has said, and I will obey it. He's looking at 
simple healing people who will obey his word just the way he has asked us to be and he's looking at for the people who are available are we available are we willing to listen to his word to have a deep relationship with him and god has a plan a plan to prosper us to give us a future we need to trust his plan in our life staying within the area of calling and gifting do not try to become something god did not design it's most of the time it's a human nature to see somebody else growing in the ministry and we think that call is our call that is what i want to become though we do not have the grace and gift in that area we try or we strive hard to do something what we are not called for we need to seek the area that god has called us for and nurture that area develop that area develop the skill and god will grace us to flow in that area each of us are called to do different things in god's kingdom to serve in different areas because god needs laborers to serve because the harvest is huge and the laborers are few and as we have chosen as we have uh, decided to uh, you know to hear to adhere the call of god in our life we need to abide and we need to seek god in all the day of our life we need to develop that intimate relationship that takes so as we journey in this life to discover god's dream god's plan god's will god will use any combination of these uh, nine posts that we studied today in our life sometimes we might have two or three of them and giving us an indication of what god wants us to do and we recognize it and we begin to move in that direction that god is leading but the point is this that we must all be convinced that god has a dream god has a plan god has a purpose for our life and that we are progressively moving into discovering that plan and beginning to live by that plan and fulfill that dream for our life now as i have been saying again that there is no greater satisfaction in our life than living for god's plan and god's purpose there is no greater fulfillment than fulfilling god's plan for our life and there is no greater adventure than living for god's dream for our life with this we complete this third chapter you all have any questions before we could end this class with a time of prayer do you all have any questions or anything that you would like to share yes sid please go ahead ma'am my question was that you were telling in before like about the godly character comes from the heaven i just wanted to ask ma'am how to maintain that because in old testament as we see like like king saul he was having a godly character but in but in afterwards in the after span of his time he was like destroyed and it was like he was about to murder david he was after david and in david's life also we see that he was a king then in span of time he had a uh, different things with bersheba his character also got destroyed same thing we see in solomon's life his character also he wrote many books he wrote proverbs you should not do that not to do that and in future his character also gone so ma'am how we can maintain that character from the go from the god good question said uh, it is very important as i said uh, you know uh, 
the leaders whom we see in the Bible are not very perfect. Okay, we all are human, but that, that does not uh, make us, uh, you know, give us the license to keep on doing the wrong things or keep making mistakes. But then we need to nurture godly character. That is why it is important during this preparation time. During the preparation time, God prepares us uh, to adore his word, to abide by what God is saying. Uh, for us to discern. God has given us the wisdom to discern the right from the wrong. We need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to have the relationship with God when God says, yes, it's good to move ahead. And when God says, no, this is not right to stop there. Those all know uh, that, you know, uh, God has chosen uh, David to be the next king. He, he had this jealousy within him. So what happened? He was, uh, you know, uh, uh, the jealousy within him led to even uh, go to an extent to kill David. Okay, so these are the things that uh, we studied in the very first class, laying the axe to the very root of self, jealousy, pride, and lust. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how we can avoid certain things, though we know that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain things which are uh, which are not right. Though we know that looking at a woman in a lustful way is wrong, but what happens? So it is an everyday challenge when you when you pass. Uh, uh, okay, you are uh, when uh, in the internet. Okay, right now everything is on the online platform. When we go on a YouTube, maybe you logged into a YouTube to listen to a word of God, but then you have been. Um, you know, there's a pop up or there's an ad about a lustful ad that comes up. So when you you cannot avoid it, but you can always, uh, you know, uh, uh, close that screen or end that video. But what happens instead of ending, if you continue it, you're giving, you're opening door for something that is not right. So you have the uh, you have the power to control it. You can stop watching that which has popped out automatically. Saul could have stopped being jealous on David. So only when uh, sometimes we are uh, enticed with certain things is because of we opening the negative doors to the enemy. That's why we need to have this fellowship. We need to have this relationship with God in the preparation. So that's why we say preparation time is not a wasted time. The more we seek, more we seek God, the Holy Spirit that is within us will lead us, will strengthen us. OK, so uh, I know for some of us, uh, if we are on long, uh, uh, long time on this call, uh, the automatically your call gets disconnected. So before we could end this call, we will pray and then we will go into a time of discussion. Is that OK? Sid, did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am, very much. Thank you, ma'am. OK, we need to have a relationship with God and seek him so that we can avoid any pitfalls in our life. That's the very reason that we have uh, um, planned to have this laying the axe of the root in the very first session to all of us. And we need to go through this every day so that, you know, we have been prepared for that call. We have been uh, uh, <clears throat> a godly character has been developed within us. OK, so this godly character needs to be nurtured and needs to be developed. It is a challenge that we go through every day to prepare ourselves as a vessel of honor. OK? Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. You got it. OK, so with this, uh, we will go into a time of prayer, and then you know we can have discussion at the end of it. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for all the students who have enrolled and set aside their time to study your word in fulfillment of your plan and your purpose in their life. Lord, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, a deep sense of divine purpose and plan grip their heart. 
And Father, we ask for the release of your divine power and grace and your anointing upon each one of our lives that we will recognize the call and purpose with which you have called each one of us. Lord, Amen. I pray that you will enable each and every student to understand that you, uh, you're doing and you're working in our life and how you're leading us step by step into the very plan of what you have for us. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that each one of us will be the history makers, that they will fulfill the highest call that you have placed in our life, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, as we submit ourselves, we pray that you will develop a godly character in us, Lord. You will help us to nurture this call, this plan in our life. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you that you are leading and guiding us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are empowering us in every area of our life. You are empowering us to overcome our weaknesses. You are empowering us and you're strengthening us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, as I, as each of us desire to develop a, a deep relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you will help us to build a relationship in our life, that we can walk with you just like how your servants walked with you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are faithful enough to do this, to fulfill your call, your purpose in our life. We ask this in most precious name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you so Amen. much for joining Thank in you. today's class. Thank you so much. We enjoyed Thank teaching you. and studying along as we teach and study. God speaks to us. God teaches us. It's always there's something new that God puts in our heart that we can learn and abide and apply it in our life. So the homework for you all, there's an assignment, okay, that you need to study chapter 4, 5, and 6 from this book, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life During This Weekend, okay? And the next week, that is in the next class, next week, Wednesday, we will study on the new book receiving God's guidance okay so today we have covered fulfilling God's purpose for your life the first three chapters and we recommend uh, it's not recommend I want you all to read the next three chapters chapter four five and six and we will start with the new book receiving God's guidance on Wednesday is that okay Very yes, much okay Yes. Okay, yes. and also, uh, and also from next week onwards, uh, uh, the last ten minutes of the session will be given to each one to share their testimony. So we will go as per the uh, alphabetical order. So the next ten minutes, uh, you can share your testimony. So we have uh, a view. How do you spell your name? A F U Y E. A, B, C, I think to be A, B, C, D, okay, are you in there? Okay, so we would uh, request uh, Fu E, are you in there to share his testimony and also Alan Sheldon. Uh, be prepared, the first four. Um, Alan Sheldon, Anita Govekar, Aradhana Kamble, please be prepared to share your testimony for 10 minutes, exact 10 minutes, okay, not much, just that 10 minutes, be prepared. So each class, uh, the last 10 minutes, you can uh, we get to your your testimony how God is a uh, God has a plan in your life and how He is unfolding it in your life and what made you to join a Bible course to study. Okay, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man.